So the information here is not of much significance except for the fact that you have about 40 observations. These are showing the marks of 40 students. So this is a raw data. So when I am going to do some arrangement in this, then the information will become little more meaningful. So those type of data will be called a group data. So what is a grouped data? When I am saying grouped data, then I will arrange in intervals, which means that I am going to find out how many students are getting between 0 and 10. Let us say 10 students are here between 0 and 10. How many between 10 and 20? Let us say there are only 2 students here. Between 20 and 30, let us say there are 18 students here. How many students between 30 and 40? Let us say 5 here. And number of students between 40 and 50, since the total number of students is 40 in the class, this is 35. 10 plus 2 is 12, 12 plus 18 is 30, 30 and 5 is giving us 35. So again we have 5 here. So total number of students in the class is 40. So this gives us a little more meaningful information rather than just writing the data in a random order. We are grouping it. So these are called the class intervals and these are called the frequencies represented by F. So frequency stands for the number of students in this case which belong to a particular interval. So we have 10 students belonging to this group and respectively all these are written one in front of the other. So when I group this, the information is meaningful. I can now do some calculation based on these groups or I can represent it on a graph so that this information becomes more meaningful. Now let us try to understand the other measures of central tendency that I have written here that is the mean, median, mode and of course the range.